So in this video, we're going to continue our electromagnetic boundary conditions adventure. Uh, and in this video, we're going to talk about the normal uh, electric field, or uh, we're actually going to talk about the normal displacement field D, uh, just because it's easier to work with than, uh, than the electric field. But in almost all cases, uh, D is just equal to the permittivity times the electric field. So going back to the object that we're interested in, which is made out of some material, uh, maybe it's got it's got a certain permittivity associated with it, uh, and we're interested in just this teensy teensy part of the boundary here, which I'm going to redraw uh, down here. We said that previously the electric field uh, and the magnetic field could be decomposed into a tangential component, which we've already dealt with, and a normal component, which we haven't yet dealt with. So at this location of the surface, it might look something like this. This is the normal component, which faces away from the surface, and this is the tangential component, which is parallel to the surface. So as you might have guessed, we're going to ignore the tangential field for now, because we already dealt with that, and we only want to worry about the normal field. Um, we're also going to assume that the normal field is, is constant over the region that we're dealing with, which is going to be truer and truer as I make this area smaller and smaller. So to, to figure out what the boundary conditions are going to be, we're going to use the only of Maxwell's equations we have left that deals with the electric field, uh, and that's Gauss's law. So the, the displacement vector, uh, or the D field, um, the electric flux density integrated over some closed surface, uh, is equal to the charge density uh, or the yeah the charge density that's enclosed or the sorry not the charge density the total charge uh, that's enclosed Q so let's call that Q enclosed so in the last couple videos we were doing a contour integral or a line integral and we constructed a loop in this video we're doing a surface integral and so we need to construct a volume which has some area over which we can integrate and so uh, the, the simplest volume, you could, you could really choose any. Um, let's actually redraw this a little lower down below so I have more space. Um, you, could, you could draw whatever volume you like, actually. Uh, I'm just going to draw a cylinder uh, because that's, that's fairly easy to visualize. Uh, let's say that we're interested in, we've got some top of the cylinder, and the cylinder penetrates through the surface, so it's touches the surface and then goes below the surface. And actually, let me draw this in solid. Um, and so we're, we said that we had some upward facing uh, electric field or some, ten, uh, some normal component to the electric field. Uh, let's call that E norm. And there's some electric field uh, on the top of the cylinder. And let's say that this is our, our material and it's got some permittivity epsilon. And there's some electric field on the bottom of this cylinder, so pointing up. Uh, and let's call that E norm uh, two. So the normal component on the bottom of this surface inside the material. Now to actually carry out this integral, we need the uh, electric flux density D and not the electric field. Um, so we have some, equivalently, we have some normal component of D, uh, and that's just equal to epsilon 1, so the permittivity of material 1, uh, times E1, the normal component, or I guess I should write that as E, e norm 1. And similarly, we've got a normal component of the electric flux density inside the material, d norm 2, and that's just epsilon of the material. So let's actually call this epsilon 2 uh, times e norm 2. And so now let's actually carry out this integral. So this uh, electric flux density dotted with ds. Now the only subtlety is that on this top, on this half of our area, um, the this ds component is pointing upwards so the the normal component to our area is pointing upwards and on this surface it's pointing downwards so uh, one of our integrals is going to have a negative sign out front of them uh, so if we actually carry out that integral since the electric field is constant uh, over this area because we've chosen a small enough area then we can just do this integral 
and we can ignore the sides of this cylinder because uh, one, we can shrink the cylinder down to until it's just touching the surface. So we, we don't need to worry about the sides. We also said that we're only considering uh, the normal component here. So really that, that doesn't, that doesn't matter, but strictly speaking, you should do this to make sure that you never have to worry about the tangential component. So this is some finite area A, uh, but the area that you're going to be integrating on the side is going to be zero because your cylinder is just on top of the surface and just on the bottom of the surface. So there's no area on the side to integrate. Now, strictly speaking, these relations are only true for linear materials, uh, but we're, we're not going to worry about that at this point. That's, that's a more, more advanced subject that you, you might have to deal with in the future. So, okay, let's actually carry out this integral. Uh, first, on the top surface, uh, we integrate over the area there, and since the electric field is constant, we just have d norm 1 times the area, uh, now, integrating over the bottom surface, where the normal vector is pointing in the opposite direction, I subtract uh, d norm 2 times the area, and this should all be equal to the charge enclosed. Uh, now, the only awkward part is this area sitting over here. So it's, we, it's some arbitrary A. It doesn't really have any meaning. Uh, and so we're going to divide both sides by the area. And now we have... Uh, the normal component of our electric displacement vector uh, minus d norm 2 is equal to the enclosed charge divided by the area. And you might recognize this as just the surface charge density sigma. So this is the physically meaningful quantity when we're dealing with surface and charge distributed over that surface. So if we want this in terms of the electric field, uh, we can just replace this by the permittivity uh, e epsilon 1, E1, or E norm 1 minus epsilon 2, E norm 2 is equal to our enclosed uh, surface charge density. And so this is the final uh, relationship, the one that you'll see most often, and indeed the one that's generally uh, the most useful. Uh, now, as just as with the uh, previous video on Ampere's law, uh, often the charge, the surface charge density is equal to zero, often but not always, uh, and in that case this equation becomes beautifully simple, and that's that epsilon 1 times the normal component our, of our first electric field is just equal to epsilon 2 times the normal component on the other side. So this is the relationship that's used most often, and uh, the one that I've, I've certainly gotten the most mileage out of. And so now we know if we have some electric field uh, on one side of a surface and it's got some tangential component, so E tan 1, uh, we know that this is going to be exactly equal on the other side. So we're going to have E tan 1 inside the surface. So let's say this, this is epsilon 2, this is epsilon 1. Uh, we also have, now we know, a normal component of the electric field. So E norm 1. And we can calculate now what the electric field should look like inside the material just using this equation. So if you rearrange the permittivities, uh, you'll see that this is just E norm 1 uh, multiplied by epsilon 1 over epsilon 2. And so now if we have any arbitrary electric field on one side of a material, we can calculate the same or the uh, an equally arbitrary, uh, we can calculate the resultant electric field on the other side. Sorry, this should be epsilon 2, uh, and I don't know why I wrote this as epsilon 2 as well. This should be epsilon 1. And so in the next video, we're going to calculate finally uh, the last component. So how does the uh, magnetic field, the normal component of the magnetic field, relate to the normal component of the magnetic field on one side of the surface versus the other side of the surface. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, please give it a like down below and subscribe to my channel. Uh, also, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to post those down below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. And thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.